Going to heaven. No, 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 you don't think I am. I am actually, but not because I'm a good person, because there are two types of people that get into heaven perfect people and forgiven people. And none of us are perfect, okay? But every single one okay, of us wait, can wait, be forgiven. Wait, wait. You enjoy that, babe. Listen, listen. Fine. Stop shaming women for choices. That I'm you not shaming women. Say. I'm. Listen, listen, babe. You're the one who's brought this argument up okay? Would you do a favour for me? Would you use this hashtag in your description on whatever social media platform you're on? Why not put hashtag World Evangelism Day? And what I'll be doing is I'll be filtering through the social media platforms and I'll be taking videos and I'm going to put them all together in one big video and I'll put them on this channel here. So it is World Evangelism Day, well actually not really, it's a week before World Evangelism Day, but the day I'm posting this is World Evangelism Day. World Evangelism Day. For the World Evangelism Day. World Evangelism Day. World Evangelism Day. Happy World Evangelism Day. The World Evangelism Day. For the third World Evangelism Day. So I have the Black Friday deal by uh, Joe Kirby, which explains uh, Black Friday and it gives the gospel. It's really awesome. Got 200 of those. I'd say I have like about 50 or so left. That's, I, I knew about God, of course. I knew about who he was. I knew about um, what he has done for us. But I wasn't living fully for him. I just knew that I had an interest in it. But I didn't, I knew that I was, I hadn't made a commitment. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. That's verse 13. Verse 14 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 says, For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing. Unfortunately, the sad thing is, we have sinned, and God needs to punish the unrighteous, because God is not only loving, but he's also just. Because, let's think here, there's a lot of bad people in the world. So it would be kind of unfair if everyone went to heaven because the bad people wouldn't receive any repercussions for their wrongdoings. So God needs to be just and right in that. But the other thing is that we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God, as I said. You see, Jesus says, all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. It's that simple. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's kind of like trusting a parachute, right? If some guy was in a plane 10,000 feet above the, the ground in the sky, and he jumps out and he says, I'm going to flap my arms and I'm going to survive. Well, no, that's not going to work. See, he needs to trust in the parachute. He needs to trust in Jesus. Now, he can believe that the parachute exists. Now, that's fine. But 
It's only until he trusts in the parachute and puts it on that he can be saved. Uh, a simple truth for you this day that uh, Jesus is God and he is creator of all things, the heavens and the earth, and he wants you to come out of the darkness of sin and into his glorious light. I pray that many would be saved in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Now that word, gospel, literally means good message, or you could say good news. So it's the good news about Jesus Christ. And as my parents began to explain this good news to me, uh, I started asking questions, trying to understand everything about it. And it came to the point where my mom said something to the effect of, look, you don't have to understand everything. The Christian life is a journey, and uh, you will increase in your understanding as you go. But she did tell me what I need to know right off the bat, which is sum summed up in the verse John 3.16. And that verse says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. It is World Evangelism Day. Yes, I said it. And guess what? I was able to speak to four people today, of which two were kind enough to take a selfie with me while two were too sensitive about it. And I totally understand. So what was I talking to them about? I was talking to them about Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 to 33. And it's, God, God here is telling us not to bother about what the Gentiles seek. What are they seeking? They're seeking money, clothes, basically ways of survival. And then the word of God is saying, No, my child, seek ye first the kingdom of God. You know, while some people do have like the money or the cars, as long as that is being used for good, that's all fine and dandy. Money itself cannot be evil. But its uses can be. When money becomes more important to you than the Lord, that has become evil. It's like that each and every day. You guys have a decision when you wake up if you want to follow Christ or not, or if you want to do good or not, if you want to kill or not, if you want to do any. You have a decision because that's called free will. Yeah, that's true. That's called free will. That's, that's a true. gift from God, even though we don't deserve it, yeah. without even realizing who God is to begin with. Sure. To start it off. That's free will. Entertainment industry, it's about influence. There is a reason why you see people dressed up as Satan. Full on visuals of Satan, people dressed as Satan, dressed as a demon, got upside down crosses all on their clothes or pentagrams on their clothes. People think that this stuff is just a game. No, there's a, there's a reason why the entertainment industry is doing that, y'all. They know good and doggone well that God exists. They also know that Satan exists. They're just counting on the fact that y'all don't know that. But either way, the things that you take in, that they're feeding you, those things affect you. Whether you realize it in the moment or not, they affect you. That's why they do it. I'm not going to sacrifice the honesty in order to be politically correct. I can say whatever I have to say with respect, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to say it bluntly. The world is engulfed in darkness. They despise even the smallest glimmer of light because light exposes the things about themselves that they want to remain hidden. But there are those who practice truth and recognize their need for the light. The only light that shines in this dark world, and that light is Jesus of Nazareth. So when I was 13 or 14, I read a Bible verse. And before that, I wasn't really like, had like a revelation or anything like that. And um, 
the Bible verse changed my life, and it was this. And my battle had begun. I know Fr Black Friday has already passed, but you know, it's still shopping season right after Thanksgiving. So, you know what? Today I'm thinking about it, I wanna sell you something. Oh, I'm not gonna get any gain from it. I'm not, it's not like my merch sale, I don't have a merch. I won't get a single cent from you. But you will get a lot from this. Have you heard about the gentle savior, Jesus Christ? The son of man has died on a cross 2000 years ago for us to wash us clean. So through him, we shall rejoice the God Almighty in the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is the good news. It's the gospel. The God who created the universe, the God who created the earth, the trees behind me, this lake, the sun, and me, and you. He wants to have an active relationship with you. Lay not up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust do corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal. Throughout the Bible, especially the Gospels, Jesus talks about, let it, leave everything behind. Follow me. Sell your stuff, give it to the poor. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean everybody can't have everything. There are missionaries, there are people, but the point is we have to be willing to give all this stuff up. Now, what is my point today? Well, it's Black Friday, and Joe Kirby from Off the Curb Ministries had a great idea to do World Evangelism Day. When everybody else is out there searching, searching, searching for that perfect thing, we need to be out there teaching them and showing them what is actually important. All the stuff that you're gathering today isn't going to equate to anything because it's all gonna be burned up when Jesus returns. They're gonna lose their souls. And if you are idolizing stuff or more materialistic and worried about the stuff on this earth that's gonna pass away instead of storing up your treasure in heaven, then that's not good as a Christian and that's not a godly thing to be doing either. So maybe we need to look at ourselves and put it in check. At the supermarket? Just leave one here. Leave one there with the chicken chips. Look at that looks enticing, doesn't it? Okay, so while I was in the supermarket, I bought myself a bottle of ginger beer. A bit thirsty. And on the way out, I placed another gospel tract with the lady at the checkout. Just left one there in the lift. And I've just left that one in the car park ticket machine. Just leave another one here in the Kmart change rooms. Someone might be in the market for a new pair of jeans. I think they've hit the jackpot. Let's throw one here near at the pet food department. Leave him sticking out there. Someone might grab it. The state of the Christian is different, friends. It's better, it's more joyful, it's more hopeful. For he or she knows that the eye can be grateful for someone, somebody, to God, to Jesus, which brings more joy, an everlasting hope, an everlasting peace. Hello everyone, it's um, the awesome creationist here. Uh, I have several questions for you, and please answer these questions. Have you ever lied before? Have you ever blasphemed God's name before? You have to face God on Judgment Day. Are you going to heaven or hell? If you die in your sins, then you will end up in hell where there is weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. To go to heaven, you must repent of your sins and put your trust in Jesus Christ. So the good news I'm bringing here today also, that Christ was crucified for you. Christ laid his life down at the cross for your sins. The Bible said it's not what I say. I don't know how I'm even meant or how I can fit this into a testimony. Because how do you compartorize the intricate wonder of our Creator, Jehovah God. 
How do you do that? I, I don't know. Put it this way, long story short, I was in darkness and the Lord pulled me out of that wretched darkness into his amazing infinite light. And for that I owe him my life. After all, he laid down his for mine, for us all. So on February 1st, 2020, I was in a major car accident. I had a tractor, or excuse me, a, a truck and trailer run a red light. Okay, so I had no chance. About, a, I think it was about a year later, I sat in my car at night, what I usually do, because, you know, it just tend to have so much pain in my heart and so many questions and, and, and you know, it's, there's so many things I couldn't do for my children, couldn't do for my wife, couldn't do for myself. I mean, I was in a lot, a lot of pain. And I still am to this day, but at that point, my heart was just crushed. I didn't know what was going on. So I asked God, and I said, uh, you know, I, I, I would I ask God, and I shouldn't have asked him, but I asked him, Lord, how did you save me? Like, that's too amazing for me not to know. You know, I'm just naturally curious, Lord. Like, you made me this way, so sorry for asking. But I gotta know, Lord. Like, Well, you know, right now, today, Jesus is my friend. He's my savior. I'm learning to make him my Lord. And I'm seeking him daily and learning from him daily through his word and, um, and witnessing. <laughs> so this is part of, you know, the process. Um, this is um, the Black Friday deal, and I ordered these um, gospel tracks from Joe Kirby, Off the Curb Ministries, on YouTube. And it has a little, um, you know, you open it and it tells about the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through me. Maybe you think you're going to go to the Father, but the fact of the matter is you can't go anywhere unless you have the Son. You may be thinking Mary is the way, but no, Mary is not the way. The Son is the only way. For God so loved the world, God the Father loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. I have Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I can always uh, humble my, myself up in prayer. I can always ask Him for what I need, he will always listen to me, asking you shall receive, it says, and I just want to tell you guys that God can change you, you just need to open your heart, you need to go down on your knees and pray, and like truly pray, cry out to the Lord. So fast forwarding a couple months into that job, my wife was pregnant with our second kid, my baby girl, my beautiful baby girl. And this is when I made the biggest mistake of my life. So what I ended up doing was I left my wife pregnant all alone. I looked her straight in her face and I told her I didn't love her anymore. And after I told her I didn't love her anymore, right in her face, turned my back on her and I ran to my mom's house. From that moment on, all I cared about was myself even more than ever. I didn't care about what anybody thought. I didn't care about what anybody was trying to tell me. All I cared about was my self, my needs, very greedy, very selfish. And I started drinking every single day, it helped me sleep because God was tugging me in my heart so much to the fact that what I did, I knew it was wrong, but I did it anyways and I wanted to numb my pain with alcohol. Also smoked every single day because I was so just on edge, intense. On yeah, I was 21 at the time, but this is where it gets even insane. And this is where my testimony truly does have power in the name of Jesus because something was happening that if you don't know Christ, if you don't have a genuine relationship with him, you're not gonna understand. My wife never gave up on me because God was working in her. So she surrendered completely to Christ. She hadn't wanted nothing to do with this world. So she gave me to God. The verse that comes to mind when I think about that is 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. Look it up. She prayed for me for seven months. And while I didn't know it, God was tugging me like no other. He didn't want to let me go. heading down a path that had no return. I did so many things that I regret. But God never gave up on me when everyone either should or did. God was holding me so tight and I 
didn't understand even to this day you can't fathom it but i hated him i hated him i hated everybody i wanted nothing to do with god like why would i want anything to do with god with knowing what i was doing was wrong but nothing's impossible for god and i need you to remember that if you're watching this and you're in a dark time or you hearing my testimony, you have to remember our testimonies are for God's glory. Everything that Elena and I went through could have been spared, but God is so merciful, so good. The fact that he gets all the glory for everything good. The enemy tried to destroy us, try to wreck us like no other, but God persevered. God restored things that nobody would ever thought would have been restored, but he did do it. God helped me become a leader that I didn't know how to be. I just want you guys to know that if there is anything you're struggling if if there are addictions in your life, um, God can get you through it. So right now I just wanna, I'll say a pr pr quick prayer over you and I'll, I'll let you go, scroll. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for this person right here, Lord. I pray that you may help them and release them from whatever sin they're in, Lord, release them from whatever temptation they're, they just can't get rid of, Lord. They're looking to that like it's a drug. And if it is a drug, well, it's a drug. God, get them rid of it. And Lord, just show them your glory and your might. May you rip them away from that, God. And I pray that you could use this testimony to move some people, Lord. Thank you that you gave me the motivation to do this, God. Help the person on the other side of their screen. Show them that you love them. Forgive them, God. And save them, Lord Jesus. In your holy and mighty name, amen. The ultimate um, thing God could do is to become man. And really, in a sense, in a sense, he redeemed all of human nature when he became man. Not that all humans are going to heaven, of course, but that he, he is the second Adam, in a sense. Adam is the first man. And um, when Christ, or God, died, um, and then he rose again. Today is the day, my friends. Accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and declare Him as your Lord. I am so thankful that God has been with me through everything, even when I thought He wasn't there. And after being so angry with Him, and He has just changed my life completely. So I guess what I really just want to say now is I want to encourage you to pray whoever is watching this i want to encourage you to seek him and to pray and don't stop because it's not going to take one time it's not going to take two maybe even it might take a while it might take a month it might take more just keep seeking him the bible says to pray without pray without ceasing and it says that for a reason so don't stop and when it gets hard which it will don't stop. That's just the enemy, and that means you are doing good. Keep going, okay? And read your Bible. Uh, I was getting bullied. Yeah, I was getting bullied, and, uh, you know, the older ones in the whole gang, like, the, we, were, we were kind of a, a squad of, like, a lot of people in there, and um, the older ones, they would force me to fight with other uh, young ones, and, uh, it was not fun. <laughs> it, it, I was kind of like being controlled by them, being used by them. Uh, people were slapping me in the neck. Uh, were kind of yeah, they were making fun of me. Um, it wasn't fun, <laughs> but I forgive them. I really love them. And if you're watching this video, please repent and uh, come to the Lord. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so you can be saved and you are loved by God. For our sake, ye who knew no sin became sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus, who lived a sinless lifestyle, he never had one foolish thought, he never looked at the woman lustfully. He never lied once, not even once. He never committed a sin, not even once. In this moment, he became the substitute for us. He became the sin. 
he who knew no sin became the sin for us. And we know that, that God's standard is perfect. Um, you know, it says in, in God's word that if we are even angry at our brother, um, that we have, we have committed murder in our hearts. And that is literally, you know, that is how seriously God takes sin. Um, and then that makes us ask the question, but then how, you know, how do we live up to that standard? And the reality is that we can't. Is that God loved us, God loves you. If He loved you enough, He knows that we can't live up to His perfect standard because we have failed Him so much in the past. Historically, people have failed Him. But He loves you so much that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, down on this earth to live a perfect life. He was mocked, He was ridiculed, He was, he was beaten, and eventually crucified because of, of the message that He brought, which was a message of hope, a message of, of redemption. Hey guys, it's Black Friday. A lot of people's going to be out today shopping, looking for a good deal. Listen, I got a good deal I want to share with you. I don't want you to miss out on this deal. The truth is, it's not going to be found at Walmart or, or Target or Lowe's or any other store. This deal is found by faith. This deal is found in Jesus Christ. He's the one that bought it for you. He's, he's already paid for it. See, it was a Black Friday deal. It was a Friday outside of Jerusalem where God's Son was nailed to an old rugged cross. And the Bible says as He was hanging on that cross between heaven and earth, He was paying for our redemption. And about the sixth hour to the ninth hour, that's from about, about noon to 3 p.m., there was a darkness over all the lands. It was a Black Friday. Darkness. Luke says a darkness fell over all the earth. What was going on? I tell you, God's Son was paying for our sin. About the ninth hour, the Bible says, He cried out, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was quoting from Psalms 22, but he was crying out to God. The decision that you make can literally affect where you spend eternity. There really is a heaven, there really is a hell, and you're going to spend your eternity in one of those two places. People always say, I just don't believe that a God of love could ever send anybody to hell. You're 100% right. If you go to hell, it'll not be because God sent you there. It'll be because on a night like tonight, when he extended a hand of mercy and prayer and forgiveness, your pride and your ego wouldn't allow you to receive his mercy. And if you go to hell, can I love you enough to tell you the truth? If you go to hell, it'll not be because God sent you there. It will be because you willingly rejected his son, Jesus, the cross and the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Brothers and sisters, trust in the Lord. When problems come, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Trust in the Lord. Have, brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. You have hope. Christ is our hope and that Christ is with us. Brothers and sisters, look what verse 6 said. In all your ways, submit to him. Seek the Lord. Keep on seeking the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, the one who is with you throughout all your problems. Praise God. When I was standing in my room, and, and the light was off still, um, and I had remembered where my Bible was, and it was still in that same spot, that I had hid my Bible and it was under some papers in one of my drawers, one of my dresser drawers. So I, you know, I turned the light on and I opened my drawer and I lifted the papers up and I got my Bible and I had remembered going from you know, grabbing my Bible in the drawer to walking step by step to the side of my bed. And I remember it was like, it felt to me like I was walking through a thick presence of, like, through God's presence. That's what it, it felt like. I, 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 was, I, I was walking through it was just everything was thick in the room, like the air. My entire being was all of a sudden just like welling up, you know, like 
I wrote, the, the emotion of sorrow had filled my entire being and poured out my eyes and onto my Bible like a flowing river as I wept. And my Heavenly Father then just embraced me like that presence. It was just like an embrace, like a hug. And I, that was the first time in my life that I had never felt so much love before. He's allowed me to learn many, many things. I've read his scriptures even more than I did beforehand. And I've learned a lot more about him and about his word. And I've done a lot more of his will. When, um, you know, before that, before that whole event, you know, I, I knew about God. I, I did read his scriptures a little bit, but I wasn't as on fire for him as I, as I am now. Once you start seeking out truth, knowledge, peace, anything that is good in this world, a gift, the gift that has been told and showed to you that someone has received like a good marriage, uh, best friends, good job, house, whatever it is, the Lord is the one that gave it. And if you say, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the resurrection of the dead, then know that Jesus is already on your side. In fact, one of my favorite scriptures is in Matthew. And he says, when two or more of my followers gather, I stand among them. My Lord Jesus is not a liar. He has never lied. So know that when you are with another brother or sister, whether it be on the phone, face call, FaceTime, video call, whatever it is, know that Jesus is with you. He's never left you. So when did my faith start then? When did I become a Christian? It was this 2020 year, okay? I was really intrigued by this TikTok video of David Lin. It, he was casting out a demon, um, like a random man on a street. And I was really intrigued by him. So I was like, wow, that's the kind of faith that he has. But for you to be able to cast out evil spirits was just one of a kind. Yeah, moving forward, I started watching him and then it continued on and then it opened up a door for me to the Christian world and that is when I knew that everything that I was once believing was not the truth and I was already heading to deception and to my death. But I started realizing how far I was from God because it was almost like I was running from Him and I, th I think that I started to feel this tug on my heart like why don't you have a more personal relationship with me? Why isn't this more real? I had been going to youth group as, as a teenager and they had a real focus on personally knowing God and spending time with him like a friend and, and putting time into that relationship and thought and your heart. And I realized my heart wasn't in it. It was just kind of a uh, routine maybe, but my heart wasn't with God. When I was a teenager about this time I'm talking about, that was when I started realizing this needs to be more, this needs to be real. This needs to be my personal relationship with God. The same church we used to, she used to go to when we were still uh, back home. And I, I started listening to it. I, I even proclaimed salvation uh, on, in October, I think 27th, October 2020, last year. and. Uh, oh, after pro proclaiming salvation, I was still, you know, smoking a bit. <laughs> uh, but after that, I uh, slowly by slowly, uh, the Lord God was delivering me from those those things. I will only invite you to think of the sacred person whom the Great Father gave in order that he might prove his love to men. It was his only begotten son, his beloved son, in whom he was well pleased. None of us ever had such a son to give. Ours are the sons of men. His was the son of God. The most quality gift you can ever have, you cannot buy. It is given to you. It is given to you by, through Christ. Jesus the Messiah it is given to you and he died for our sins 
Now, do you want it? That's 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 up to you. Do you want it? Because it's there. And one of the things that I want us to really pay attention to is the fact that it says the love that we have, in, the love of God that we have in Christ Jesus. And so it's so important for us to see that Jesus Christ, he is the center of our faith and God the Father, he receive he receives us as his children once we place our faith in jesus christ to want to get closer to the lord and in that time i'd stop using the two main blasphemous words the jc and the gd um but i still said omg you know i still did all these other sinful things because i didn't know what being a christian truly meant and so fast forward about a year later and um I was getting more into the faith, but I still had absolutely no idea what it meant to be a Christian. And so I was struggling, you know, with things, and I, I wanted to know, you know, more things about the Lord. And through that, I learned uh, what the Bible actually says. It all started with God, who created the universe. However, man was his special creation. And he gave man one job, and man messed up, and sin and pain and death entered the world. I was very self-righteous. I thought I was better than them because I didn't do those things that they did. But I conveniently ignored all the sins that I did do, of course, when I was considering myself more righteous than them. And I don't know any of those people today, so I don't know if they'll ever come across this video or not, but someone may be surprised to hear that I ever became a Christian because it is fairly surprising someone so self-righteous and proud and selfishly ambitious would ever listen to or hear the gospel. And I listened to a couple of TV ministers where I'm from that are Protestant churches, but they left out a key detail that this guy on the radio did not leave out. And it's that you're condemned, that if you have broken God's law, you're condemned. It doesn't matter how many times you've done it, you're condemned. If you've broken one commandment, you've broken them all. Both Galatians and James says that. And so this guy was preaching the gospel. I'm making fun of him, I'm laughing at it, but he says that and that caught my ear and said, wait a minute, is that true? Am I condemned because I've broken God's law? Even if I've broken it the least amount of times of anybody on earth, which I knew that wasn't true, I'm just thinking that. Is this true what this man's saying? Surely this, this idiot is a liar, what I thought. So I said, I have a Bible. I'm gonna look it up. I don't think he's telling the truth. Well, I sit down and read the Bible and I just read Romans. I just read the first probably five chapters of Romans. I think I may have looked up the, maybe the, the verse in um, James or Galatians that talked about breaking one commandment, breaking them all. I don't even know if I looked that one up, to be honest, in, in hindsight. But I know I read Romans for sure, at least the first eight chapters. And it was humbling because I realized this man I had no respect for. I had no regard for. I just mocked and made fun of him. That's it. He was right, and I was wrong. And what the word clearly showed me was that I was a sinner. was that I was unacceptable to God. And that if I, if I died, I was gonna go to hell. And I deserved it. And then I, I called on the Lord, just like the Bible says to do. I repented of my sins. I called on the Lord, and He saved me. And it was immediate. I mean, there was no, there was no process. I called on the Lord, and immediately, you know, my sins were washed away. I was full of joy and peace and love immediately. On that cross, not only did He suffer the physicalness, but the physicalness. I don't think that's a word. But not only did He suffer like that, but He took every single person in the world since He thought of you as He died on that cross and suffered. Hey. It takes the rock bottom pits of despair to usually find him. But may you not have to find that darkest place to lift your hearts to heaven and know that there's a God who cares, that there's a God who sees. And this God can only be heard or grasped upon and truly known through his son, Jesus Christ. Today is that day, Mesa. Come to know the Lord for yourselves while today is still today. This is our prayer. Behold, now is the favorable of time. Behold, now is a day of salvation. Thank you so much, and God bless you all. Folks, you're not going to find a better deal than that. Eternal life for free. A home in heaven 
for free. Oh, oh, it's free to us. But it was a high price that was paid for it. It cost the death, the blood of God's Son, Jesus Christ. Folks, a lot of times you'll go shopping on Black Friday. You're looking for a big object. You're looking for a big screen TV. And they might be gone by the time you get there. But I'm telling you, there's room at the cross for you. Do you know him? Вітаю, друзі. Нещодавно на Ютубі один з проповідник запропонував проводити Всесвітній день евангелізації. Happy Evangelism Day! I'm excited to... Uh, it's been exciting to do this. I started on Wednesday, and today's Friday, so hopefully I can hand out the rest of these Black Friday um, gospel tracts. May God be glorified, magnified, and the center. Yo mensen, welkom bij een gloednieuwe video. Fijne wereld evangelisatie dag allemaal. In deze video wil ik wat dieper ingaan op de video. Gedraag je als een overwinnaar. Oh God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with whiz. Dumb power and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with whiz. Dumb power and love, oh God is an awesome God. Well, everyone, thank you. God bless you all. God right, bless. Greg? God bless. Keep waving. Wave, wave them out, Greg. God bless. Go goodbye, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, that was yesterday. Happy World Evangelism Day, everyone.